On today's show, how come Ford isn't telling anyone that the Echo Sport is already on sale in the American market? Tesla's latest autopilot crash catches the attention of the NTSB. And we get to your questions in You Said It, coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the automotive industry. We kick off today with a bunch of product news. After unofficial pictures leaked out, Jeep just released these official renderings of the Jeep Commander, which will only be available in China. It's a three-row SUV, something very much missing from Jeep's lineup. But to our eye, this looks like a stretched version of the Cherokee, which is already made in the same assembly plant by GAC. Next year, Jeep will introduce the Wagoneer, a three-row body-on-frame SUV for sale in all the world, but we don't think the Commander is any indication of what the Wagoneer will look like. Land Rover is coming out with a special edition of the Range Rover SE Coupe. No word on what this special trim level will cost, but it's going to be a lot. Only 999 of them will be made, and it makes its official debut at the Geneva Motor Show in March. See, did you know that the Ford Echo Sport is already on sale in the U.S. market? You might not know that because Ford's not telling anyone. There's no advertising, no marketing, no test drives for the media to report on, and yet they've been on sale for about a month. According to our local Ford dealer, it starts at about $20,000. According to the EPA, it's rated at 28 miles to the gallon with a turbo one liter engine and 25 MPGs with a naturally aspirated 2-liter. Ford says it's waiting until it has enough Echo Sports in inventory before it starts marketing it, but to us it sounds like some sort of disconnect is going on. You know, today it's easy to pick out autonomous cars, what with all those sensors poking out of them, but the next gen will not be so easy to spot, and that's coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Autonomous cars are still in their early stages of development, and they look it. A lot of them still have weird protrusions sticking out of the body for the sensors, with trunks typically jammed full of computers and wires. But Magneti Morelli, working with the supplier Automotive Lighting, has ideas on how to integrate it all. With their system, long-range radar gets mounted high on the front grill, with short-range radars mounted down low with the fog lamps. Video cameras and LiDAR are integrated into the headlight housings. At the rear, radar, video cameras, and LiDAR are integrated into the taillight housings. And of course, there's a washer system to keep all those sensors clean. It's a clever idea and suggests that all the technology for autonomous cars will ultimately get integrated in ways that we will not even notice. You know, Ford keeps running into problems with allegations of carbon monoxide leaks in Explorers. NHTSA has been investigating the issue since 2016 and received over 1,300 complaints from drivers who became dizzy and nauseous. Ford says a recall isn't necessary and that Ford dealers will offer a free service designed to reduce the concern, but this problem just doesn't seem to be going away. And in other safety news, another Tesla Model S operating on autopilot crashed into a fire truck in Los Angeles, traveling at 65 miles an hour. No one was hurt, but the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, is collecting data to decide if a formal investigation is needed. And coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Okay, here's the part of the show where I get to answer some of your questions and comments. Lex says, I've been very frustrated in attempting to locate Klaus Busse's email address so that I can send him my idea for what the refreshed 2019 Jeep Cherokee front end should look like. You may have my permission to give Mr. Busse my personal email address. Well, Klaus is now the head of design for Alfa Romeo, Maserati, and Fiat. 
The guy who heads up Jeep design is Mark Allen. But before you send him your rendering, you ought to look at the redesign of the Cherokee that was already unveiled last week at the Detroit Auto Show. Fabian heard us report that FCA stock shot up sharply this month, prompting us to wonder who's buying that stock. He points out that the supplier company GKNPLC stock up went up by around 27%. Thanks for pointing that out, Fabian. When a supplier company's stock jumps so fast in such a short amount of time, you just know that somebody's gobbling up shares with an eye to taking over the company. Lambeau 2015 saw our story that FCA bribed UAW officials to get a better union contract. He wants to know, if the FCA union contracts in question have to be ratified by the members, what good does bribing the UAW officers do? Apparently the contracts were still agreeable to the majority of members. Well, not at first they were. Remember, 65% of Chrysler workers rejected that contract the first time around. Then the company offered more pay and better job security, and they ratified it. That was unusual. The rank and file almost always votes for what their leadership negotiated. Yukon Doit knows that on Auto Line After Hours tomorrow, we'll be talking about whether CES is killing the Detroit Auto Show. He makes this observation. The auto shows used to have great fanciful concept cars to draw people in. In the 90s, the concept cars, mainly Chrysler, actually made it into production just a few years after being shown. That kind of excitement and potential to actually own that cool stuff could get people to attend, but nowadays we know we won't see that excitement. Good point. Frederick Smith saw our report that the Acades engine in a Ford F-150 pickup could deliver 37 miles to the gallon. He says, Cheers for the Acades engine design. New methods to achieve better fuel economy is the future of engines. It's good to see someone is moving forward with technology to balance the electric powering of cars and trucks. And you know, this could be better than you even think. Acades tells us a big North American manufacturer is interested in licensing this engine, and we think a big announcement could be coming later this year. Buzzard sees big problems with data mining of the data generated by cars. Big data. So if the police want to know if you were in the area of a crime, will they be able to download the data to use against you? Yes, they will be able to do that. Just like they can do that right now with the data on your phone. But at least the police do have to get a search warrant from a judge before they can go digging into your data. Ken's 300 says, I'm surprised that so many people are buying vehicles from VW. After Dieselgate, cheating customers and selling, polluting diesels, you would think people would have second thoughts about rewarding them with more sales. Well, Ken, the average person never even heard of Dieselgate. Jeff High says, the Trump cheat slash Trump comment was right on, LOL. And in case you missed that, what we said is that GAC, Guangzhou Automotive, would be making a big mistake if it thought it could use the Trump Chi brand in the American market because the people who hate Trump will never buy a car with part of his name on it and the people who love Trump will never buy a Chinese car. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. And with that, we wrap up today's show.